In the previous video, we looked at an example of why you analyze with and without a project rather than before and after. Now we're going to look at what alternatives you can choose between for your project. First, how specific changes in your exact goal changes how you will design the whole project. And then secondly, we'll look at how a project needs to be separated. Okay, let's look at how your goal changes how you design the analysis. First, let's look at a cost effectiveness analysis, where no matter what, we assume the benefits make the project worthwhile, and we just try to find the cheapest way to get it done. If the intent is more specific, such as to eradicate a disease in an area, a disease for which there is a vaccine, you may just want to compare different methods of distributing and delivering that vaccine. Maybe one alternative is setting up some stations with nurses who will administer the vaccine. Maybe another alternative is distributing pills that have to be taken regularly or maybe another one is releasing a therapeutic gas into the atmosphere that drops down and infuses through people's skin. I don't know anything about vaccines. It would be pointless to try to put a dollar value on the benefits received by a vaccine in this scenario to compare costs and benefits. You would probably just analyze the different scenarios in terms of cost per person vaccinated. Then pick the project that vaccinates the most people for the least cost. But maybe there's a little more going on in this town. And our goal is a little bit more broad, to increase health in general. Maybe this particular area has a water supply that has some bacterial infection that people are getting sick from. And maybe also everyone has lung problems from pollution from a nearby factory or something. And maybe there's a few different alternatives for dealing with water problems, such as reducing farm runoff or treating the water with chemicals. And maybe there's different ways to approach the air pollution too. To measure these kinds of benefits, we could look at how morbidity or human lifespan changes across different alternatives, but that might be hard to measure, so we could just look at the potential changes in the number of sick days at work or the changes in admissions to a hospital, and pick the option that creates the greatest changes in those measures for the lowest costs. So these are cost effectiveness analysis. It's usually done when considering things like health or education where we assume these have great benefits to society and just try to find the most cost-effective alternative. But if you want to increase general welfare and do a cost-benefit analysis, you're going to have to measure benefits with a dollar value because you're comparing so many different things. Maybe everybody's traveling hours a day to gather water from the nearest water source. And then by just providing some sort of pipe works, you could save thousands of walking hours. Or maybe the town could use some electricity. Or Maybe it could use a casino? In reality, it'll be a matter of what's the best use of this land and or what's the best use of this amount of money. And your alternatives will be much more streamlined than this. But the point is, the overall goal you're trying to accomplish will completely change what scenarios you consider and your approach to measuring what is successful. So now let's look at a different situation. Let's say there is a river in a nice valley and you want to put in a dam so the valley will fill up and you can generate hydroelectricity. And then you have this nice lake thing that you can put some sort of outdoor recreational institution on where people can go swimming, rent boats, and do whatever it is people do on boats that they can't do inside. So we just compare this project to the next best thing, the opportunity cost of capital, right? Like we did before? Well, not yet. We've missed something. This may seem like one big project, but there's not technically anything that ties the use of the reservoir for recreation and the use of the reservoir for hydropower. For example, let's say the water is only needed later in the year to meet peak demand for electricity. But let's say also that the majority of the tourists are coming later in the year too. If the water is being used for electricity near the time the tourists want to be on it, they may find they have an empty reservoir. In this case, operating the tourism may decrease the efficiency of the whole package. Spending money on tourism facilities might be the difference between a successful or an unsuccessful endeavor. So when we do a project, we have to look at which aspects are separable and can be analyzed on their own. Leaving out a portion of the dam is clearly not separable because it's needed as part of the whole project. It wouldn't operate without it. A project is the smallest separable investment unit that can be planned, financed, and implemented independently. Although the recreation facilities require the reservoir, it's a separate venture. The dam can operate without it, and these things should be analyzed separately. Looking at the previous example about improving health in the town, if there are vaccines that can be handed out, a water supply that needs sanitation and air pollution to deal with, these are all completely separable. So we'll have to see which combination of these things will improve health the most with the money we have to invest. Maybe we should spend all of our money on just vaccinations, or just cleaning the water. Or maybe some on vaccinating and some on cleaning the water or cleaning the water and reducing pollution, or maybe a little bit of all three. We need to look at every possible combination of these projects to see where we should be spending our money. In the next video, we'll continue breaking down the setup of a cost-benefit analysis by looking more at the differences between a financial and an economic analysis.